Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the Superfluid Sanctuary. You can call me Professor C and I will be doing a detailed and complete uh, lecture series on anatomy and physiology. Today is the very first one and we'll be talking about an introduction to A&P. Specifically, we'll be going through some of the jargon uh, that we need to know before we dive further in. So without any other business, uh, let's get to it. A three, two, one. All right, perhaps a good place to begin is with the history of anatomy and physiology. Even though we don't need to get into it terribly much, let's just touch on a couple of topics. The ancient Egyptians many thousands of years ago contributed to our knowledge of anatomy and physiology. You can fast forward a little bit to the ancient Greeks and they too made many contributions to the study of anatomy and physiology. We could even have a longer discussion about Galen and how he is considered to be the apex of ancient anatomists and how it used to be one time frowned upon to look inside of a human body. But uh, Galen and his students normalized uh, these exercises. So at some point, public dissections became a thing that you could actually attend and observe. It became something of a curiosity to citizens in the 16th century. Again, we can get into all these topics, but what we probably should do is just slow it down and start at the very beginning. I would start with mastering terminology. Pretend you're going to learn a new language here, and if you have learned a new language, this is extremely similar to doing that, but there are some tricks. I will tell you one trick that I've learned over the years is just keep it simple, right? Learn the very simplest things and then start trying to string together maybe more fancy ideas, but you don't need to sound like a professional after, you know, 10 minutes of watching a video. So keep trying is what I'll say. And as strange as it seems, it is very helpful to actually repeat some of these terms out loud, even though, you know, your roommate might be suspicious of you talking in the middle of the night. So just like a language, repeat it out loud, start off simple, use the terms in context if you can build a sentence with it. Very important, I'll stress this almost on every slide that I do, is to remind yourself of the root meaning of the term. And after a while, you won't have to do that. Your brain will take care of that for you, but it all comes with some kind of repetition, repetition. So the next image here is a big giant tree with all of its root structures. And I'm not talking here, of course, about tree roots or family roots even. I'm talking about learning your roots as far as prefixes and suffixes, tags in front of words, tags behind words that are easy tricks to know things that you may not realize you even know. So let's try a few of these real quick. If you know them, shout them out yourself. Cyto. Yep. That's a cell. Osteo. That's bone, correct? Sometimes just os. Hyper and hypo. Some of these you'll find out turn out to be pairs or opposites of each other. And you'll see them a lot. Hyper, just think of a hyperactive child. If you've seen a hyperactive child running around, he can't control himself. He's overactive, right? So I'll put more than, right? It's more than something. Something is described as hyper. And then hypo would be the opposite. Hypo would be less than or fewer, depending on, you know, the context. More and less is usually enough to get the point. Histo. Not referring to history here, uh, in anatomy class, histo, of course, refer refers to tissue types. And you might see, again, a word that's not here, but the ology suffix. And you've probably been told what this means, the study of. It comes from an old Greek word, logos, which means to have a, a discussion about something. So we, we can say the study of because it actually works almost every time you do it. So take something like histology, right? Well, that would be the study of tissue, right? Osteology, if there is such a word, would be the study of bone. 
take something like osteocyte. And you could actually do that. You could take cyto and turn it into a suffix site, but you still see that root C-Y-T, osteocyte, a bone, cell. Micro, I think a lot of people know this already, means something very small, is micro. Glyco, sometimes the Y is replaced with a U and it becomes gluco, but this refers to either glucose or sometimes just in general, a sugar. Yeah. Lipo, lipo, again, it's potato, potato, as far as how you pronounce some of these words. Uh, my rule is if you can get the question right on an exam, it doesn't really matter if you pronounce it super correctly or not, right? So lipo refers to fats, oils. Uh, another fancy word for that is lipid. Lipid. So the word lipo or lipo refers to some sort of fatty type of substance. Phobiophilia, other opposites. Uh, phobia, you can think of it meaning as fear of, but it actually means hater and philia, the opposite lover. And if you use these terms, instead of phobia meaning fear, if you can think of phobia, phobic, meaning it's something you hate and something that's philia or philic, something you love, right? Let's say you have a condition called cytophilia. I guess you love cells, right? Or you have sugar phobia, glycophobia, right? You can make up terms for these all day long. How about two more? Emia, nice good root word meaning blood. Itis, a very common term, doesn't mean disease. It refers to a very specific tissue response when it gets damaged. And we say the tissue is inflamed. So we say inflammation when tissue becomes damaged. You might even see something like you say blood. I've seen a root word hemo for blood. Yeah, that's the prefix for blood, hemo. Emia is almost like hemia, but the H is gone. So again, you'll see these, and it has been said, even though I have never counted for myself, that there are about 400 of these roots out there. And if you know these 400 roots very, very well, you can handle almost every medical term that there is already. So anatomy, and again, this, this course is anatomy and physiology, but we usually start by talking about anatomy because it's the easier uh, one to discuss with people who are new to the subject. In fact, if you take the word apart, if you cut the word apart, you see that it means to cut apart, to cut up. Anna meaning up, a Greek word root meaning up, and tome or tomia, referring to cutting. So literally, anatomy is a cut up. It's to cut something apart to see inside of it. Why? Well, because the structure of our body is very complex. And it sometimes has layers wrapped within layers, wrapped within layers. And you have to cut it open to see what may be hiding beneath other structures. So anatomy is a study of structure. Okay, so you might be seeing gross anatomy and you think, oh, gross, uh, like it's disgusting or something, but that's the wrong terminology here. Gross in this instance means large, big, something you can see with your naked eye. You don't need a microscope to see it because it's macroscopic, right? So we can break this apart into several different terms. You might hear surface anatomy. Again, I can see over here on this fellow, I can see some skin and it's big. That'd be called a gross anatomical structure. That's the surface of the body. You can talk about regional anatomy over here. You can see the abdominal pelvic regions broken into nine regions. And that would be called regional anatomy system like the stomach again if i plopped a stomach down in front of you uh, you could tell what these different pieces are just by looking with your naked eye we could cut it open and see inside the system even more but usually if we talk about systemic anatomy you're talking about some particular organ within some particular body system microscopic anatomy that is looking at tiny things now like cells which you see in several different forms up here. Uh, this would be called cytology. Again, the study of 
cells. I see some interesting things and I want to go ahead and point them out to you. Uh, this blue ball here in the center of the cell, often referred to as a nucleus of the cell. You also have out here kind of a shell around the cell. This is called the membrane, the cell membrane. And then you have little objects inside here, floating inside of this soup. And that's what we see here. Now we'll study this much more later, but if you want to get into what these things are and what they do and what their composition is, structure and function of cells, you need to study cytology. The bottom image, I see more cells. Again, I see kind of the same thing. I see a, you know, a ball and a smaller ball and a ball and a smaller ball and a ball and a smaller ball. Uh, but it looks like these cells are stuck together and they're working together. There's more than just one of the cells here. There's a lot of cells. So this is, this is called histology, the study of many cells doing the same job. Tissue, study of tissue. Developmental anatomy is a whole different ballgame. We won't be touching on this in our courses, but the thing is this. <clears throat> if I took these five images, one, two, three, four, five, and I put them in front of you like flashcards, and I said, I want you to tell me which one's a fish, which one's a chicken, which one's a rabbit, which one's a human, and which one's a salamander, with no other hint, it would be hard for most people to tell. So when we are unborn, when we are still embryos, we all kind of look the same. We all kind of have very similar structures, but when we're born, obviously a fish looks very different than a human, which looks very different from a rabbit. So the study of how organisms develop from the time that they are conceived to the time that they are born, if you want to use those terms, uh, is called embryology. Now, as far as physiology goes, if anatomy is the study of structure, then physiology is the study of function. How the body uses these parts that we learned about in anatomy, how the body puts it all together. And so here you have to get a little bit deeper into things. A lot of anatomy is memorization, learning the names of terms, learning the names of locations, the, the parts. But if you want to know how the engine works, it's, it goes beyond just knowing what the parts are. You have to know how the parts move around and move with each other. So you'll see a lot of you know, physics, a lot of chemistry, a lot of cell biology in physiology. It's usually more complicated than anatomy. Once you've learned the structure, then move on to the function is what I would recommend to most people. You can't understand how a computer works if you don't understand the parts or the components that build one up. That's the idea here. So we'll usually focus in physiology, since it is a little more difficult, on a particular organ or a network of organs, maybe even a system. You'll talk about different types of system physiologies, such as renal physiology. And here's a good root word to know. Let's see if you know this one. This refers to the picture you see here a big K and here a big K. There's two brown structures called kidneys, right? Renal refers to the kidneys. So when you hear about renal physiology, this would, would be about how the kidneys function to do things like filter the blood and excrete certain waste products. What are these purple things on top of the kidney? You probably know, but what are they called? They're called what? Ad renal, right? Adrenal glands. We pronounce it adrenal, but if you look there, it's got the word renal telling you they might have something to do with kidneys. And then later you're like, well, I've seen the word even adrenaline. Yep. Some sort of substance produced by the adrenal glands. So all this has to do with renal physiology. Hepatic, another great word referring to the liver, which is the organ, pretty large organ you see here, uh, that I marked liver. And I got to make a point here that this is the right side and this is the left side. When you're looking at a figure like this in anatomy physiology, 
it's the patient's right or the dummy's right if you're looking at an anatomical model. So it seems a little backwards when I say the liver is a giant organ on the right side of the body because at first glance you say well, that's on the left, but it is actually on the right side. And that's how you would spot your liver, right under the, the rib cage on the right side. Hepatic is the word that refers to it. So hepatic physiology would have something to do with how the liver works. And it does a lot of things. It does about 200 functions that we know of. Okay, I see some intestines, it looks like. I see some guts, as they're called. And a very good root for the guts is usually the word enter. It looks like enter to come inside, but enteric, enter is one of those roots, entero. You'll see many, many times in discussions about A and P. So enteric physiology would have to be mainly concerned with the digestive system and how it works to break down food, absorb the food, and help it to nourish our body. Okay, CV physiology, cardiovascular if I ask this of people walking down the street, you'll hear almost everyone scream it has to do with the heart, the heart, the heart. And correct you are if you said it too. But notice that cardio, the heart, the word for heart, is just half of this word. The other half is vascular. So never, never, never forget about the tubes, right? And you can see in these images, tubes coming out of the heart. Arteries and veins would be a, probably a better word than calling them tubes, but you can see them like that. So cardiovascular physiology would have something to do with how the heart works and how it serves the body in delivering blood and many other substances that are dissolved in the blood to parts of the, the body to keep them alive. There's a thing in anatomy called the principle of complementarity and it is like it sounds. Organs complement each other. They help each other to do a job. And that's the idea here. Function is dependent on structure. Structure is dependent on function. The organs look the way they do because they wouldn't function the same if they didn't look the way that it did, right? So these two things are inseparable. As usual, thanks for watching. If you want, check out the other videos in the series. See you next time. Bye-bye.